Howdy, AP Pregal. It's Ms. Kosh. We are going to talk about polynomials again today. Um, to begin with, we have some notation to make sure we're understanding. And that is, if, um, if I take a value and I plug it into my polynomial and I get zero, we can call that a zero or a root of the polynomial. And, um, and so if, or if x equals a is a zero, then x minus a is a linear factor. Um, so factors would be x minus whatever, and then zeros would just be that value. Um, I think that all makes sense as we keep going. If a linear factor is repeated n times, then the corresponding zero of the polynomial has a multiplicity of n. Typically, we know that the graph of a polynomial passes uh, through. <laughs> That's what they want. Through the zeros of the graph. However, when a zero has a multiplicity greater than one, the graph will, have, will behave differently near the zero. Okay, so for example, they've given us this one. Um, they put this negative point uh, 0, 1 so that it, well, the negative makes it open down. The point 0, 1 gives us reasonable numbers so that it's not shooting off crazy high. Um, okay, but on this one, we have an x plus 4, which tells us that negative 4 is a 0. So here it is. Here's that negative 4. And this is what we would describe um, as passing through. Uh, when it's a pass-through, that tells us that what that implies, that's the math symbol for implies, that the multiplicity is 1. Okay, the next one right here, what I see, I see an x plus 1 cubed, um, which tells us that at negative 1 right here, um, you could, I refer to that as a bend, but I think I've heard kids call it a wiggle, whatever. Um, and so that implies that it's an odd multiplicity bigger than one. So multiplicity is going to be, in this case, it's three because that was three right here. It could have been five, but it wasn't in the equation. In general, they tell us um, to do the most simple possible answer. I think we'll, we'll see one in a second. Um, the next part was this x minus three squared tells us that this right here, this is a bounce, is how I refer to that. The bounce will have an even, it implies, uh, implies that it's an even multiplicity. Um, and in this case, it was two. Well, we would assume two unless they give us information for us to, to, to extend it to four or six or whatever. Okay, um, we can, and then we would write it out as x equals negative one, x equals one with a multiplicity of three, x equals three with a multiplicity of two. Um, and x equals three, okay. Okay, that's great. The next one, um, so then we can also talk about what happens when we have non-real zeros. So on this one, um, uh, we could have complex roots, and you will not necessarily see them on the graph. For example, if you just take this parabola, we've taken the parent function and shifted it up one. Notice it doesn't cross the x-axis anywhere. Um, we can solve this, though. We can set it equal to zero and um, subtract one. And now we can do, this is where I do my cheer. Um, I have a video where I was on Zoom with some former students, um, but we were demonstrating the, the cheer and it's square root, square root, plus minus, um, writing it out. But anyway, that's what happened here. We did square root, square root, plus minus, we have plus or minus, and the square root of one is equal to i. Um, so notice we can't see that there's a plus or minus i on here because my x-axis is all real values and my y-axis is all real values, so we don't know where to plot a non-real value. Okay, so there's a little tweak that I would do to these notes, and that is it says all imaginary roots come in pairs if, pairs, if the coefficients are real. Okay, so here, let me explain what I'm talking about. Um, it could be, if I had a polynomial, if I just said x, if I say I have a root of i, so then x minus i is a factor, and I have a root of 2. I could act, um, x minus 2. Okay, I can FOIL this out and get x squared. This is a minus i x, this is a minus 2 x, so it's a minus i x, it's a minus 2 x, and now it's a plus 2 i. Okay, if I write this as a quadratic, uh, we could say f of x is equal if it makes us feel better. My a value in front of the x squared is just 1. I can factor out um, the x from these two, and I might write it as a negative. Well, it's a, the i was negative and the 2. Or you could distribute the negative through, um, and then plus 2i. So if you were looking for your quadratic to be in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, it could be... Your a would equal 1, your b would equal a negative, 
i plus 2, or you could tell me that would be negative 2 minus i, or however you want to write that. I don't really care a whole lot. And our c value would be equal to 2i. So my point is, you can have a polynomial that has non-real coefficients, but if we're, we don't see that very often. And so what they're saying with this problem is that they'll always travel in pairs assuming that the coefficients are real. Okay, um, and then that if a plus bi is a root, then so it also is a minus bi, which is the conjugate. Okay, um, so then they want us to find the conjugate of these. It changes the sign on the b part, on the, the, the non-real. So it's negative 4i, this is a positive i, this is 2 plus 3i, and this is a negative 4 minus 2i. Okay. A polynomial of degree n has exactly n complex zeros when counting multiplicities. So with something like this, um, well, let's look at this one. Okay. Well, exactly n means that if it, like this one over here, could have 1, 2, 3, so 1 plus 3 more is 4, plus 2 more is 6. It could do other weird stuff, um, but the way they wrote it out, it was degree 6. Okay, well, let's look at this next one. The graph of the polynomial function f is shown in the figure above. It is known that this, x equals i root 3, is a 0. If it has degree n, what is the least possible value of n? Well, so here's what I see. I see a pass-through, and I see a bounce. Okay, so the, the pass-through tells me that I'm going to have 1, 0 from that. Um, and that's the number one, pretend. A bounce tells me it's going to be even. Well, so the smallest, so notice they said um, the least possible value, so that means that this is going to give us a multiplicity of two. And this one, what they really should have said is the graph of the polynomial function f of x is shown in the figure above, and we should have included this sentence. The coefficients are real, or something like that. Um, they did not, but they should have. They intended to. Um, I will try and make it more clear when I write things. Um, okay, so we've got this guy will have to travel with its buddy in order to make the coefficients real. So there's one, two, three, four, five. So the least possible value of n is five. Um, I'm going to stop this video here. Let me make sure that that's what I want to do. Okay, sorry to make you brainstorm with me. Um, the next video I'm going to come back and do is going to deal with poly polynomial inequalities, and then I may do a different one on um, using the degree from a table of values. So go check out my next videos. Go practice. Good luck.